Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with an opinion video and if you read the thumbnail, basically I'm making a video about the film prices currently and why I think it's going to what it was. So let me start with film cameras were the only thing that I grew up with. I am born in 82. I shot film uh, throughout my teenage years and even up to being around 20. And back then there was different levels of film cameras that one could buy and afford like everything in you know capitalism. So I, for example, for my birthday, 18th birthday, I got a Nikon F80 with a kit lens for around equivalent 800 to 1,000 euros today. And that was all that I could afford at that time, even though I asked for my parents for the gift and I worked and so on. So that was what I could afford. Then when film cameras kind of like stopped going into uh, the stores anymore and customers with digital coming in, the disruption of that made film camera prices drop, plummet to the point where it was uh, affordable for anybody to buy any camera. And that's when I actually picked up a film camera again. In that case, I picked up a Hasselblad uh, 500CM, this is an ELM, for $600. And why did I pick up that? Because that was the price of an 85 F1.4 for an Nikon that I was shooting at the time, a D700. But what happens is, Film cameras had that disruption of digital uh, cameras that killed the market. And there was such a flood of film cameras in the market that the prices dropped. Nobody wanted to shoot film, digital was the future, so on and so on. That stopped development of film cameras. And that made everybody that wanted to shoot film or was interested in film afford any camera they wanted. You could pick up a Leica M6 for 800 or less. You could pick up uh, a point and shoot a T2 for like 200 or less. I bought a T3 contacts for 400 euros in like 2006. This is like over 10 years ago. Um, so basically it was so, so cheap to get into film cameras. What's happened throughout all these years? Basically there's no new film cameras, films being enjoyed by new generations nowadays and cameras are getting broken. This has made film cameras go back to what they were. We actually see it, I work at a camera store and we actually see it every day. Nowadays, we're going back to where there's those different st stratuses of film camera prices and users. No longer is the day that a guy that makes coffee uh, full time can maybe afford a brand new Leica MP or a secondhand Leica M6 or can shoot a Mamiya 7 uh, on his holidays and Portra all the time. Those days are pretty much long gone. Yes, some people are hardcore aficionados like me will save their money and buy those cameras, but they're no longer something that you could pick up for you know less than a month's paycheck. And that is something that is, it kind of stings to a lot of people, including me, because we picked up cameras for very, very little money. And now we see the prices of those new cameras or the secondhand market cameras, sorry, being really high. But the funny thing is we're going back, like I said, to those old days when I was 18, when the bank guys or the investors or the dentists could afford the Leica M6s or the normal guy that just had a normal job had to buy a K1000 and so on. And that is where we're heading. We're very lucky though that there was so many film cameras, so many different stratuses of price ranges that there are plenty of cameras still today. So yes, nobody is going to go ahead and buy a Canon EOS 1N to shoot pictures of their puppies running through the beach. Probably not. But you can now buy a Canon 300V and a kit lens or a 50mm and shoot those same pictures. So the wonderful thing is that, that we have tons and tons of cameras in the market. But those prices that were... They were not normal. Someone today was writing me on Instagram like, hey, I wish I would have bought an X-Pan when the prices were normal. Uh, the problem is the prices were not normal. They were abnormal. The drop in the market made them really cheap for some time, and then the market picked up again. I was looking at prices. An X-Pan was about three to 4,000 uh, back in the day. It dropped down to like 1,000. I remember buying one for 1,000, uh, pretty much new with two lenses. And nowadays they're back at 4,000. And this is with no uh, supply of no, new cameras. So yeah, when people get angry and see the prices and all this, we're basically going to, like I said, back when I was 18 in the year 2000 and where you could not afford whatever the camera you wanted if you had 
a normal job or pay normal pay. So only the high-end professionals or people with a lot of money could afford to buy Hasselblad, uh, Mamiya 7, and so on. So that's where we're heading. And yes, a lot of people don't like that, but it is uh, the reality. Uh, one another topic is the point and shoots. We've seen the point and shoots. I remember these Olympus M2 or the stylus uh, being $10, $5, $10, $20 at the uh, markets around and the secondhand stores and the thrift stores. These cameras were never $5 when they were made new. Now they're around 160, 180, 100 euros uh, in Europe. And that is not even close to what they probably were when they were new. And they will keep on climbing because there's no new supply. And like I said, uh, people will start shooting, uh, for example, this Canon AF35J. This is a camera that I bought here at the store for 29 euros, I think, and is probably 90% as good as any other high-end uh, premium point and shoot. You don't really need that Contax T2, Contax T3. Uh, that was made for those high-end users back then and now, once again, is sold for those high-end users. So yeah, this opinion video is kind of like to give my perspective on the pricing of the film cameras. The fact that it really looks like we are heading to what it was 20 years ago and uh, that's gonna be fine. Thankfully, the prices are going up. The tide is rising for all the prices. That's a good thing. And why is it good? Because those cameras now are not trash. They're not something that people just dump anywhere. It's worth fixing them. You can uh, pay for a repair and have them for more years. It continues the market and the industry of repairs, of spare parts, of mechanics, which are really needed. Nowadays, you can buy uh, a Leica M2 for 1,500 or so, probably overhauled, at least where I work, they're around 1,600. But you could also buy it in the secondhand market for, let's say, 1,100, and then pay for a CLA for a couple hundred. And you'll have a camera for probably a decade, uh, maybe a little less if you really wanna keep it up to spec, but like a decade of use in your hands. And that is great. And that is a 60-year-old camera nowadays. So. Yeah, we're lucky to have all these cameras. We, some of us are lucky to have bought a lot of the cameras uh, 10 years ago when the market was dipping down. That's why I have all the gear you see back here and I could afford it is because they were cheap and they were plenty full and they were everywhere. So I enjoyed buying them and I've been lucky. But nowadays, if I had to restart my collection, I would probably not afford like us or Mamiya 7s, or Hasselblads, or Mamiya RZs, I would probably have to go for settle for the middle of the ground, maybe a Bronica, maybe like I said, a Canon 300V, or a Spotmatic, things like that. Because film also is going up in price, and that kind of goes again in the balance of things. But the camera market really needs this price to go up to maybe incentivize, like I said, mechanics and so on, but also manufacturing of new cameras which I hope to see in my lifetime. So yeah, that's the opinion video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your comments. Uh, yes, some people will write their wins of buying x for 200 euros. Some people won't, uh, will complain. But yes, I still think the camera market is going back to where it was and putting those you know levels of users with the levels of cameras and prices. And some things have shifted because of uh, demand and supply, but they're pretty much nail on what they were 20 years ago. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, do remember these opinion videos are basically run thanks to people supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal donations. I left the link below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.